intercept the battle. And I come in the battle not as a king, which Run DMC was, not as a prince, which was LL Cool J, not as a gangster, which was actually a guy named PSK from Philadelphia. I'll leave that alone. But I wasn't the gangster rapper either. I was called the teacher. And when I came out to battle, I would battle you with new words in English. That was my style. So when we got dissed by Mr. Magic, I said, well, let me go after his number one MC. Because it's only right. He's down with hip hop. He's the best in the world. He's claiming it. He challenged LL Cool J, who said, he's the best in the world. I'm nobody from the Bronx. I jump up, make a record called South Bronx in 1986. This record, South Bronx, answers MC Shan's record, Queensbridge. Now notice the titles, South Bronx, Queensbridge. Bronx, Queens. Queens is mainstream, commercial, and pop. The Bronx is cultural. I dropped a record called The South Bronx out of really arrogance. Really. Because hip hop at the time was all about that. It was about men feeling like they were real kings. And then you proved it through battle. And so I intercepted MC Shan and said, LL, come on and battle. I jumped in the middle and said, instead of trying to take out LL, you need to take your own boys off the crap. <laughs> then I entered the battle with a diss to his whole crew. But now MC Shan is battling from a African-American point of view. What I mean by that? He's battling like a DJ he hears on the radio. I'm a savage. <laughs> Here's what I'm at, okay? Hip hop never seen this before. And why didn't they see this before? Because you stopped advertising and promoting the founders of the culture. So when I met up with the Today Rapper, and with all due respect to MC Shan and everybody in the Juice Group, they were simply no match. And I'm not saying that for no braggadocious, although at the time it was very arrogant. I'm saying this to you scholarly. That the person who's here, you are unstoppable in hip hop. You may not be nothing in architecture, nothing in law, nothing in medicine, nothing in education. But those six letters, H-I-P-H-O-P, -H that thing, you start here with that, there is no challenge that, those, that that's, those six letters come to, there's no challenge you won't be able to knock off, get past, step over, push to the side. You have ultimate strength. That's how I entered the battle. I entered the battle and I knew who he was. I knew who their group was. And although MC Shan is down with the culture, he was still playing a mainstream game. So we battled. The battle was ferocious. I pulled no punches. The streets claim I won the battle. I don't claim that. I claim that MC Shan started my career. <laughs> to this day, I make sure I say his name with high respect. MC Shan. Why does he get respect? Because he followed the rules of hip hop and it cost him his career. The rules here was, if you won't battle, battle. He challenged LL Cool J. LL Cool J fronted and lost all respect in hip hop. For that moment, at least. I intercept. 
Don't be picking on LL. Why don't you bat on me? I'm real. He knew he was going to die. But he took the battle anyway. That's why I respect him. He followed the rules. He knew who he was up against. It got too crazy in hip hop and one of the warriors came out to change the whole game. When I came out in hip hop, I told everyone, because I knew people say, oh, he's just arrogant, he's just egotistical, he just think he all that. So I put it in records. I wrote it down. I said, I am a teacher and others are kings. If that's the title they earn, well, it's well deserved, but without a crown, see, I still burn. Without a crown, today these dudes is talking about who's the king of hip hop. Stupid. At the end of the day, hip hop has no kings. It's not ruled by a monarchy. Hip hop only is ruled by teachers, philosophers, scholars, poets. Those are the leaders of the culture. So here I come out of this. MC Shan was with this too. But he was challenging a dude that wasn't with this. That dude didn't follow the rules. I stepped up. Me and him did follow the rules. And what happened? According to the streets, he lost the battle. I put out a record called South Bronx, and my record wasn't dissing him directly. I throw a few jabs at him. But my real beef was why we don't know about them. My first record, 1986, speaks of them. Before I open my mouth about me or anything, them. After the South Bronx, MC Sham retaliated with a record called Kill That Noise. South Bronx, Kill That Noise. The record was huge, but only for a week. I heard it on Friday. Next week, I had another record out called The Bridge Is Over. <laughs> and the bridge, meaning Queens Bridge, is over. And I dropped that record, and it was this style. I dropped it because I knew hip-hop never heard of this. They were still doing Run DMC.